Who here has a special, one-of-a-kind relationship with someone that's unlike any other? Whether it be a family member, a partner, or a friend, they are your person that you immediately go to without thinking. Please raise your hands. Now, you don't need to raise your hands, but think to yourselves, what would you do if you were to lose that person? The Nipper family was one of a kind. Our bond was unlike any other. We were the type of family that people dreamt to have. We were unstoppable, inseparable. It was the four of us. Band concerts, sporting events, community events, you name it, the four of us were always there together. And parties at our household, they were like no other. One in particular that I will never forget was my sweet 16. We held it at my house, I invited so many people over, and we watched an outdoor movie. We're watching a thriller, everyone's on their toes, when out of nowhere my dad screams, happy birthday, Allie, and we all turn around and there are fireworks going off in the sky. It was amazing. Everyone's looking up, admiring all the colors, when I look over at my mom and dad who had the biggest smiles on their faces. It was a night to remember forever. My name is Alexandria Nipper, and I'm a college student that has created a support system co to connect those who are going through similar situations. But first, let me tell you about the story that has changed my life forever. In December of 2017, I came home being finished with my first semester at college. My sister was a senior at the same school as me. We were so excited to have a nice month-long winter break. I remember running into the living room to finally celebrate being one semester down, seven more to go. I look over at my dad, and I had asked him if he was okay. He was quiet, staring off into space, and didn't have the TV on or completing a crossword puzzle like usual. He told me to get my sister and to bring her into the room because he had some news he had to tell us. He was neither smiling nor frowning. For once, he was completely expressionless. That's when I knew something was wrong. My father rarely cried, but in that very moment, tears poured down his face as he said to us, well, girls, I've been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. My body froze. My sister was crying uncontrollably, and my mother was shaking me, begging me to say something. But there was nothing to say. What he had just said out in the open would change our lives forever, and there was nothing that I could do but accept what was to come. What I didn't realize was that I wasn't prepared at all for the journey ahead. One Friday afternoon, I had received such unexpected news, and all of a sudden, overnight, I was full of unknowns, frustration, facing long night drives from school to home, and big responsibilities that you never imagine a 19-year-old having to go through. So what was it like being a caregiver at the age of 19? I'm going to share with you two responsibilities that you never imagine a first-year college student having to face. For instance, number one, I'd help take care of my father. I made sure he ate, I'd help him put on clothes, and we would listen to music. And while I was at school, I would set my alarm for 10, 12 every morning to wake him up and stay on the phone with him to make sure that he got out of bed. To have your father beg you just so he can stay sleeping because he is so tired from all the medicine that's going into his body is one of the worst feelings that a daughter can have. And number two, I made sure we enjoyed every moment of our time together. We'd take photos, knowing they would be some of the last. We would share memories so he could remember them up in heaven. And I would tell him my near future plans so he could wish me good luck and remind me one last time how proud he is of me. And there you have it. Being a caregiver at the age of 19 involves many things, in addition to school and figuring out life and all the tragedies or miracles that could come along with it. Did any of you know that each year, approximately 1.7 million cancer cases are discovered within the U.S.? Imagine the friends and family of 1.7 million people who may be going through this alone. When my father originally told me about his diagnosis, I felt so helpless. I wanted to create something that would help him. It was clear that there was a lack of support from people who were exactly like us. My father, mother, sister, and I didn't have someone that we could talk to who had the same role with the disease or let alone was affected by cancer itself. I remember thinking to myself, what can I do to fix this? And that's when I decided to create an online connection community that connects cancer patients, survivors, and caregivers with one another. 
Throughout my dad's journey, one particular date that stands out to me is October 24th of 2018. I remember missing class and traveling with my family to a doctor's appointment. However, this wasn't just any doctor's appointment. This one was a special one. It was our last hope. This was the last cancer treatment facility that would tell my father if there was any trial that he could get into. We're in the room waiting for the doctor. My father had his headphones on his head, listening to his special playlist that I had made for him. And he had his eyes closed and a calm expression on his face. I was freaking out trying to focus on my school assignments so I wouldn't drive myself crazy, wondering if there was any hope for my best friend. I thought for sure there would be something. My idea, Yuva, would have been useful at this time because we didn't want to say what we were thinking, yet we were trying everything in our power to remain strong and not wear our feelings on our sleeves. When the doctor came into the room and told us that there was nothing they could do for him, I was hit with this feeling I don't think I will ever have again. I look over at my father, who, like the champion he was with every single piece of bad news thrown his way, accepted it without even a tear. It was awful. When the doctor had left and my mother had given us our privacy, my father grabbed my two hands and with tears filled in his eyes, he whispered to me that I needed to keep going. On December 18th of 2018, my father lost his courageous battle. I needed to keep going and fulfill the promise that I had made to him that I would do whatever it takes to make my dreams a reality. And that is exactly what I am doing here today. I am making my dreams a reality. I felt awful for my family, especially my father, who didn't have someone that they could go to for the proper support. In addition to school I was, and being a full-time caregiver and being a part-time student, a part-time caregiver and a full-time student, I wanted to continue to make this service because I wanted to make sure that no one had to go through this like we did. We could have benefited from Yuva, and others can still benefit from my idea as well. So to anyone of any age who may be going through this service and who feel as though they no, may not know what they're doing or are feeling stuck, I am here to tell you that you are not alone. I invite you all to join Yuva and help provoke change for the 1.7 million people who may be going through this alone as well as their friends and families. Thank you.